Hi, welcome back to Hinduism Q&A. Today we're going to look at karma, what it is and how it's believed to function. This is a huge topic, so it'll be split up into a couple of sessions, which I'll cover in this and the next one. First, we need to take a quick look at how the concept of the soul being born or reborn works before we explore karma. If we now refer to the Purusha who we looked at before as Paramatma, meaning ultimate soul, let's imagine him as an ocean of energy that is a super soul. When a drop of water from this ocean drips to earth, this soul takes birth. The process of karma for this soul is now set in motion. When this new soul is born as a baby, the nine planets or Navagraha who have been charged by Lord Vishnu to regulate karma begin to act upon the baby. We could say that Newton's third law is now in effect. That is, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Every action and thought that happens is now accounted for and the new soul now becomes embroiled in the cycle of reincarnation according to this karma that is generated. This soul now reaps the fruit of what they sow and the nature of that depends somewhat on the three gunas or energy states that make up their personality. The three gunas are sattva, rajas and tamas. Almost everyone is a mix of all three but the balance will be different in everyone. Someone with a high proportion of sattva will be selfless and unattached to the fruits of their actions. High rajas makes one act on passion and desire and tamas makes one act without thinking or have lazy disposition. Now that we know the mechanics of karma have been set in motion for this soul, we should understand the types of karma. The only karma is not the one my kids refer to as instant karma. There are four classes of karma, but before we look at this I would like to point out that the accumulation of good and bad karma is not a balance equation. What I mean by this is that if you do something bad but then do something good, they don't cancel each other out. Rather they are two separate accounts and you will reap the fruits of both. The first type is Sanjita Karma. That is the grand total of all karma through all of your lifetimes, saved in the celestial karmic account just for you. It can be karma generated consciously or unconsciously. Within this there is Prarabdha Karma. This is karma that has ripened and is ready for you to experience in this lifetime. The remainder is banked and will be experienced in future lifetimes. We now have Kriyaman Karma. This is the karma generated by current actions. When I see clients for an astrological consult, I'm often asked if everything is predestined. We should understand that our life is a mix of the karma which we have to experience and free will which we exert. Kriyaman Karma is the free will part of this and the Kriyaman Karma you generate flows into your Sanchita Karma account. For example, you may be struggling with an illness, but the treatment you seek and choose to go through is free will. The effect or success of that treatment is dependent on how fixed that karma is. This is something we look at in the later session. Finally, we have Agami Karma, and this is your actions that you contemplate, but don't necessarily put into action. Let's take an example here to illustrate how this works. In the Mahabharata, Dhritarashtra asked Krishna why he was blind and why he had to lose his hundred sons in this lifetime. Krishna explained that 50 lifetimes back he was a cruel hunter and once just to have some fun he threw a burning net on a tree full of birds. This caused 100 young birds to be burnt to death and many others to become blind due to the fire. After listening to Krishna, Dhritarashtra asked why did I not get punished in that birth itself or in the next birth? for the sin that I had committed. Why was it delayed until now? Lord Krishna smiled and replied, your karma had to wait for an opportune moment which took 50 births. During these births you accumulated enough good karma to be born a king and also to have a hundred sons in that one lifetime. The Sanjitha karma accumulated over the last 50 births now influence your life in the form of Prarabdha karma and now can deliver the fruits of the evil action you had performed then. Sometimes many people ask why does God allow so much suffering in the world? There are good honest people who go through lots of hardship and there are not so good people who are enjoying an abundance of wealth. Well this is where you can see the effect of past life karma and the fruition of those in this lifetime. What you do with that wealth or how you deal with that hardship will generate further karma for you to bank for future lifetimes. 
If someone is due to enjoy wealth in this lifetime, we will see that in their horoscope through planetary combinations called Dhan Yogas. If they are due to suffer, then we can see the planets for that area being afflicted. This is because a horoscope is a blueprint of the karma you have brought into this lifetime. We'll leave it there for now and in part two we will look at the three states for your karma and I'll discuss how you may be able to reduce or modify it.